All right guys, before I even attempt to say this name, I want you to know I've practiced for hours and can source multiple sources, including Google, who say it like this, Quetzalcoatlus. Hopefully that hits the nail on the head, and please let me know your thoughts on my attempt at pronunciation down below. For now, we need to talk about what society and life in general would be like if we still had 32 to 36 foot wide reptiles weighing around 500 pounds flying around our skies. And to no surprise, yes, they are one of the biggest known flying animals of all time, because what creature 30 plus feet in size weighing a quarter of a ton can take flight? Apparently this one. Now I will say there isn't really much information on these things, and there is still a fair amount of debate regarding important factors, such as if these things could even take flight, or would just glide around after jumping from a peak. Either way, today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking what if the Quetzalcoatlus didn't go extinct? What's going on guys? Welcome back to LBQ. I'm your host for this one, Jared Bronstein, and today we're talking about the Quetzalcoatlus. As always, be sure to let us know what other videos or questions you'd like to see on our channel in the comments down below. And speaking about comments, stick around until the very end for some comments replies. For now, let's get right into this one. Now just to clarify, the Quetzalcoatlus is believed to have a wingspan ranging from 32 to 36 feet and is estimated to be about the height of a giraffe while standing, coming in around 18 feet tall. Still, this would be a pretty big reptile flying around our skies. And although they are still a fairly new discovery with the earliest fossil dating back to as recent as 1971, belonging to the Azhedarchid group of Pterosauruses, which is usually and incorrectly referred to as pterodactyls, these things were believed to exist around 77 million years ago. In regards to physicality, they had long beaks similar to a modern day stork. However, they had long necks as well like a giraffe, which seems to have made up a large majority of their height. They would stand on all fours as well, which is odd, but their wings were almost extensions of their hands. In a sense, they almost use their fingers to fly. It sounds insane, and that's because it is, but we're also talking about the world's largest flying animal. These things were believed to exist around 66 million years ago. In regards to physicality, they had long beaks similar to a modern day stork. However, they had long necks as well like a giraffe, which seems to have made up a large majority of their height. They would stand on all fours as well, which is odd, but their wings were almost an extension of their hands. In a sense, they almost use their fingers to fly. It sounds insane, and that's because it is, but we're also talking about the world's largest flying animal, which existed 66 million years ago, so maybe this isn't so far-fetched. In regards to diet, well, this is up for debate. Truthfully, a lot of the information I'm going to cover in this video is up for debate, as there seems to be more information coming out about this thing as the years go on. Like anything in science or history, it's possible we learn more as we discuss more about the past. So it's quite possible some of the information in this video will actually be outdated five years down the road when they possibly learn that Quetzalcoatlus never even went extinct at all. Likely not going to happen, but who knows. Either way, let's continue. Regarding diet, well, this is another big old question mark. Originally, researchers believed they would fly over water and use their long beaks to feed on fish and crustaceans, but it wouldn't be long before researchers would come to the understanding that where the fossils of these things were found, there weren't any large bodies of water nearby. Specifically, in 1975, Douglas A. Lawson, who actually discovered the fossil in the first place, rejected the idea that these things ate fish. He believes these things would fly around scavenging for carcasses and possibly even feeding on baby dinos. It's believed they lived mostly in land, again due to the fact that their fossils were found nowhere near water while they were still roaming the skies. In 1996, this hypothesis was rejected, and researchers would believe that these things would fly closer to the water, skimming it for fish that it would catch in waves. Although this was widely accepted for years, in 2008, it was determined the dragging method they would use to capture the fish was highly unlikely. Pointing out the reptile's physicality, specifically referencing their necks, beaks, and jaw, it was determined these things were likely inland creatures who did feed on small animals, leading many to believe they were carnivorous. In regards to flight, well, surprise surprise, there's tons of debate here as well. Some don't think they were capable of flight at all, while others think they would push off all fours and take off. Then you have the party that believes they could simply jump off of high peaks and use that momentum to glide for hours and possibly days at a time. Of course, depending on which one of these hypotheses are true, would certainly change the outcome of our video. If they couldn't fly, there's the possibility we find ways to combat that should one ever come into the city. But if they were able to take off at any given moment, that's a totally different story. Mike Habib, a specialist in biomechanics from Chatham University, described the Quetzalcoatlus as, I quote, a very bizarre animal to see fly above you or walk on the ground. It would look like a strange amalgamation of a classic modern reptile, bird, giraffe, and bat all squeezed into one. And speaking on flight, both he and Mark Witten, a paleontologist, believe these things had the ability to fly up to 80 miles an hour for a total of 7 to 10 days, as high as 15,000 feet. However, he explained that doesn't mean they necessarily did. 
doesn't mean necessarily a specific number, just that it would be long enough to say, cross an ocean. Although some agreed they can fly, they disagreed with the distance in which they could go. It seems the most widely agreed upon stance is that these things were able to fly long distances, fed on baby dinos, and although how they got in the air is still a big question mark, either by jumping off of elevated areas or using their own strength, while in flight they were able to increase their speed and altitude. So with all this in mind, what happens if they never went extinct? Well, we could be in some big trouble, but it seems only in remote areas. Odds are these things wouldn't fly around the city the way pigeons do because there would just be way too much going on. The noise, the people, the large buildings, it's just all so unnatural that these things likely wouldn't want any part of it. Although their fossils were found around Texas, as we know the world was and is a much different place than it was 66 plus million years ago. So to say that if these things existed they would fly all over Texas would also be incorrect. It's likely that if they did still exist, these things would probably live in the mountains. But given the little amount of information we truly know about these things, it really is hard to say for sure. When speaking of any kind of prehistoric creature, it's also important to keep in mind, they would need to adapt to our way of living, not the other way around. Example being, if for whatever reason these things tried to feed on humans, assuming we would use enough firepower to kill one, two, or however many came close enough that we were to feel threatened, eventually they would just stop attacking us. Now I'm not so sure they'd even try to feed on humans in the first place, although it is evident they would prey on smaller creatures such as baby dinosaurs. A baby dinosaur is still bigger than a human. I mean not necessarily, but odds are. With that being said, it's likely that these things wouldn't necessarily be the same size that many believe they were all those years ago. Again, back then it was a different environment, more oxygen on the earth, different temperatures, and even landscape. But the question at hand is, what if they didn't go extinct? This would mean that they did in fact find a way to adapt and they're currently living among us, we just don't know it yet. And if that's the case, well then our lives likely wouldn't change all that much, at least in regards to the average person's day to day life. For those actually studying this thing and really anyone who has studied prehistoric animals in the past, this would be a complete game changer. What other extinct creatures are out there that never actually went extinct? And how did these guys manage to survive the ice age? As you can see, the reality of these things never going extinct opens a whole can of worms I feel people really wouldn't want to dive into. Or maybe they would, I mean, it is an interesting idea to think about. Regardless, one thing is for sure, if these guys never went extinct, maybe we'd finally be able to get some answers to questions that have been puzzling scientists and researchers all these years. We'd likely start off with the simple ones of how they fly and what they eat. Although it appears we do have limited knowledge regarding these things, I think it's safe to say if we did come to the conclusion that they never went extinct, we'd immediately invest a lot more time, money, and effort into studying these reptiles. And that would simply be to increase our knowledge of the historic looking reptile that may or may not fly and has been argued to weigh anywhere between 200 to 550 pounds. There are some researchers who genuinely believe these things weighed half a ton, but there isn't so much weight behind that theory. No pun intended. One thing is for sure, if these guys never went extinct, I certainly hope they didn't enjoy the cold winters and humid summers of Toronto because the last thing I'd want to see first thing in the morning is a 36 foot wide, 250 pound plus bird flying overhead. Maybe there are 500 pounds. Who knows? But that does it for this one guys. As always, please let us know your thoughts in the comments down below and be sure to drop some questions you'd want to see on another video. For now, let's reply to some comments from the video, what if there is no cure for the virus? Gary Sheldon Jr. said, please don't give 2020 more ideas. I couldn't even predict like an asteroid hitting the earth this year would not even be the craziest thing anymore. But that's happened before. But I mean like a big one that like takes an entire country. I would be like, yeah, that's, that's standard for 2020. What are you, like that's, that's what it is. I don't know who we pissed off. Doom Slayer said, well, here is the ultimate answer. Gamers will reign supreme. I think, I think the correct answer you were looking for here, and this may piss off a lot of people, but I think what you meant to say is Xbox players will reign supreme because we all know Xbox is the greater console. Star What Solon said, simple, kill everyone with the virus. I actually saw someone reply to your comment being like, what if you had the virus? And I thought that was just a great reply. And I could leave it at that, but I think that's wrong because Aside from how morally wrong that is, it doesn't necessarily mean that the virus will necessarily just disappear. Like it could still live likely somewhere else. So I'm just saying, I don't think that's gonna stop the virus from, you know, that's all I'm gonna say. V8 Wavy said we should attack the virus with a knife or a gun. If we kill enough of them, we can win. I agree, man. I'll, I'll join in the front lines. Guns a blazing. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. You guys have been watching LBQ, and we'll see you in the next one.